Welcome to chapter 1, part 2. In this chapter, our aim is to create a whole new level from scratch. When you make a new project, you're going to have this blank template world with the table and chairs demo. We're going to replace this with our own unique world. In our content browser, we have the add new button. We can choose the add new button and click on level. This will create a new level uh, asset for us and we can name it. So I'm going to name my one maze one. Now I want to keep things organized here. I'm going to do right click, new folder, and I'm going to name this one maps. I'm going to drag my maps into the maps folder, choosing move here. To keep things uh, easier for us to find items, I personally like to colorize my folders. So my maps folder here, I can right click on and go to set color. And because my maps are typically an orange color in their thumbnail, we're going to make this an orange color in our view. Like so. So at a glance, it's a lot quicker and easier for, to find the folder we want. Go into your maps folder and we can double click on maze one to load it up. It will ask us to save, click save selected, and you'll be presented with the new world. Now the new world is empty, so it's completely blank. To fill this up, we need to put in a few items. First thing we do is put in a sky sphere. So on your modes panel, search for in the search box sky, and you'll see sky sphere as one of your options. This is the built in blueprint of the sky sphere in the engine content. Drag this into your world, like so. We're also going to want the skylight. Drag the skylight into your world as well. The skylight will take the color of the sky box and bounce it around into your level. So if the sky is this sort of sunset orange, it'll bounce an orange light in and around the objects. Alongside those two, we're also going to want a directional light. So search for directional and drag in your directional light. With these three items in your level, I'm going to select them all in my outliner by holding click on the first one, hold down shift and click on this last one to select all of them. And I'm going to make sure the location are all set to zero, zero, zero. The reason why I put it at 000 is that therefore I have a good reference point for the center of my world. The way a sky sphere works is that essentially it's just a giant sphere that's inside out and there's a texture on the inside. For example, if I click on my sky sphere, push the F key to focus it, it will zoom out and focus on the entire sphere. If I want to zoom back in, click on my directional light and push the F key to focus on my directional light. Click on your sky sphere, and what we're going to do is make this directional light change the color of the sky sphere based on its orientation. The directional light acts as the sun, so use that with the sky sphere to get the correct sun position in your sky sphere. So click on your sky sphere, and in the details panel down below, you'll see directional light as an option. Click on this drop down box, and you can choose your directional light. Now the sky sphere will change and reflect upon its changes based on the directional light's orientation. By default, the orientation of the skylight is going down, like so. If I were to change the orientation of my directional light, using the rotate tool, to say point up, I can click on my sky sphere again, and choose this refresh material tick box to update the material to reflect the direction of the uh, light source. Because it's pointing directly up, that means it's giving us a nighttime scene. The sky sphere has loads of other options available to us as well. We can change the cloud speed and cloud opacity. Turn it up, turn it down, and make it go faster if I want. If you click on the little yellow arrows next to these options, it will reset to its default settings. I'm going to return my directional light to face down as it was to begin with. So I rotate it back down, click on my sky sphere, and choose refresh material. And now our sky sphere is directly linked to our directional light. And our skylight is going to reflect this blue light around the whole entire level. To get a whole level actually begun, we need to actually create a first bit of land for us to, uh, to walk our character on. So what we're going to be doing is go into our mode panel, and we'll search for geometry. So click on your geometry option. And it's going to give you loads of options of building blocks that you can use to build a level. We're going to use a box. So drag a box into your world. 
and we're going to set the location to zero, zero, zero. Change it to change its size. Below that, you'll see brush settings, and you'll see X, Y, Z, and each of them is set to 200 currently. Change your X to 3000, your Y to 3000, and your Z to 20. And this will be the first starting point of our stage for our gameplay to take place. There are loads more options available to us in the box brushes, but more on that another time. And that will bring the end of chapter 1 part 2. Join us next time in part 3 where we create a game mode and set it all up to link into our world. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. We wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.